Hey, gringo, what are you doing out there? Where are you at? Niagara Falls, Canada, eh? cultural capital world. Look, you need to pay attention today because we have made a video about something I've been making other videos about, but this one is important. Up there, right about now, Manuel, my friend here, is going to give you a lesson in all things Bajo Quinto and Bajo Sexto because, I mean, he is a walking Wikipedia of this stuff. We have been missing out. If you like Spanish-style guitars, well, you know you do. You like your ES, well, electric Spanish. That's what Gibson meant. Anyway, click on that link up there. Not now. You need to pay attention to what we're saying. And then at the end, in your leisure, you need to go check out. But I rescued uh, this guitar out of a store window in Ventura, California, cultural capital world from my friend Rob over there at Guitar 48. And we did the first episode about some history as I know it, getting back into the wars that were going on in Mexico in the 1840s and Antonio de Torres and all these bracing patterns and God knows what. So you can pretend to be an expert like I do until this guy comes along and shows me up. But at the end of the day, the first episode was about the guitar, where it was found. And then the second one, I pulled the back off. It went deep into the structure of it. And today, we're going to hear from this person who lives and breathes this music in Los Angeles, California, cultural capital world. Yeah, everywhere is the cultural capital world, <laughs> except where you're at. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking this garbage and let's turn this over let's go hello everybody my name is Manuel Ayala I'm from Los Angeles California a city called Paramount California and I'm here with my friend and we're here to talk about a little bit about Bajo Sextos and see what a little bit I know I'm gonna share with you guys the story builders uh, the influence that I have in this music and people that influence me of course and we're gonna go from there so the way the way I started in this music it was, I mean, you could say it was from the streets. Um, I mean, I always listened to this music. When we're going back since I was a little kid, we could, I mean, I could start naming a lot of bands. I mean, just quick ones. We could start Miguel and Miguel, which is guitars. Uh, Ramon Ayala, Cachorros, Canelo Durango. Uh, a lot of uh, Tejano scene, uh, Selena, Flaco Jimenez. Go down the list, you know? And, um, and the way uh, that got me intrigued to this instrument called the Bajo Sexto was uh, it's, it's more of a, a culture thing, more of a culture. And it's more of a, when people, you know, they get together in a carne asada and they just want to sing a couple of jams, play a couple of jams. And that's what literally what happened. I had a friend of mine came over, he brought a Bajo Sexto. He told me, hey, I'm gonna bring an instrument. I'm like, bring whatever you want, bro. His name is Faustino. And um, he brought up our sex store, and as soon as he brought out, he started singing with it. I was just, I was just intrigued with it, like the way you, you, you make everybody happy, you make everybody want to drink, have a good time with just one instrument. Now then, of course, it comes with the accordion, but he just brought it at one time, and I told him, you know what? I want to learn that, and he looked at me because back then it was weird for people where we come from to learn that instrument. You know, either you were a musician, your family was a musician, or it wouldn't happen. So I just told him, hey, you know, I want to learn this, and he taught me the first little things, and I just went from there and and just fell in love with it. So, this is our band slogan, Manny Tololoche. I'm going to use this to protect the finish of a, of a Bajo Sexto. So we're going to start talking, we're going to start talking a little bit more about them. So I'm going to show you guys one, I have one here. This is a, I mean, this is a more of a modern, classic feel to it. This is like very beautiful, very beautiful instrument made by Rubens. I, uh, I work with the guy. He's, we sell these bajos here in, a, in, in the United States, Rubens. But this is a beautiful work from the guy. This is a Brazilian rosewood. This is Brazilian snakes, uh, snake uh, wood, the bindings. And for, me, for the for the neck, it was actually koa, koa, Hawaiian koa, which is, you really don't see that. But this is more of a modern, classic 
uh, feel to a, to a bajo sexto. And um, a little tweeting will help. Sounds beautiful. So we can explain more a bit about it. Right here we have seashells on the name, uh, concha we call it in Spanish. I believe the wood is called black wood or something like that on the head. The, the fretboard, the fretboard is made out of rosewood. It's made out of rosewood, beautiful rosewood. The bridge, same thing, rosewood with the traditional style bridge. They started making this style bridge. I believe it was uh, Porfilio, I'm talking about man, 1900s, 19 to 1920s. It's kind of, this is the way he started doing them. So it was made traditionally. We have the Rosetti here, same thing, nice and beautiful. As you can see, it, it looks like a, like a rope. Same things, out of concha, that we say in Spanish, beautiful top. I want to say it's a, a special type of spruce in, in, in gold, like England or something like that. I can't really remember exactly what the, the top but it's beautiful. Let's flip it around. The neck is uh, out of a Hawaiian koa. Normally, normally you don't use that for a neck, but it was a special order, custom order. So that's what the customer wanted and that's how it's pretty much going on. And um, Unfortunately, the customer got sick, so he couldn't continue with the bajo, so that's why the bajo is with me. Brazilian rosewood on the wood. Beautiful Brazilian rosewood, as you can see. And it has a little trim of uh, flaming uh, maple, flame maple. And here is snake wood. Just this bajo is just custom order, top of the line. You know what I mean? Just anything that's beautiful. Like I said, traditionally, they use different type of woods. This one is a Candela's guitar made here in on East, East, Los, East Los Angeles by Candela's guitars. Good friend of mine, Tomas. Good job out there with Candela's. They've been in business for over 100 years, so they do all type of string instruments. This one is a cutaway. We're gonna talk a little bit of it. The cutaway, well, first, let me show you guys the bajo. Black, beautiful Rosetti here, which is all handmade. The cutaway, I mean, there's a big mix about the cutaway in the bajo world. Everybody, I mean, I mean, I just went to Texas and I met a guy, he, he told me he was the one with the idea. And then you go on YouTube and you see a, a, a guy named Licio Robles that played with Ramon Ayala and Los Bravos. He was the one that made uh, the idea. And, and no, I, I mean, I met so many people say they made the idea, so I mean, I can't really coin who did it. But the cutaway was made, because this is a bajo sexto, right? But as time, back then, you used to play it, and you used to, you know, you used to hit the six tree. Right? But then as music started growing and evolving, people stopped using the six string. You know, there was no, the electric bass came in and sing, so there was not really, really any way. You use a six string, it sounds kind of weird. So a lot, a lot of bajo players would just take out the six string and it just be five. That's why the quinto, bajo quintos comes from. Because the original bajo sexto, then it became bajo quinto. So they take out the six string, and I mean, I mean the six string. I'm sorry, and you don't need the the. And now they started playing more. They don't even use the bass. It's just just rhythm. You know what I mean? So that was all. All they. That's how that evolutionized, and that was the reason. So the story goes that they go to. They went to a guy named. Martin Macias from Texas, San Antonio, Texas, who is a really, really famous builder that a lot of people consider him the, 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 the man, the, you know, the, 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 the top, top of tops, the way just for bajo sextos. So they went to him and, and they told him, hey, you know what, can you make me one that just, we just don't need the, 
And I heard he didn't really, he was he was not really a fan of the idea, but he let him know, but he just made, made it happen for them. And that's how the Bajo Quinto was born. So let's, let's explain a little bit more into detail. So the six string, when it was originally made, it was, somebody was made, they say they used to play an orchestra, so it was this this instrument was made to to do bass lines. It was not to to kind of follow somebody. It was just to do bass lines, right? But then, as music evolutionized, it, people started playing more more inward. They started doing more licks. That's why they did a cutaway because they couldn't really reach because the originals. The fret work, the fretboard, the fret uh, frets, they'll stop here. So over here would just be plain. You know what I mean? They'll be plain, no, there will be no frets. I'll try to look for one, I'm pretty sure I have one. So people started working down here, you know? Type of thing. What we're gonna talk about now I mean, this is just what I know, what I got, a little info. If you guys have more info, people that are watching this, feel free to comment. You know what I mean? I, this is what a little bit I know. This instrument, this started like, a, I mean, I'm pretty sure it went back to the 1900s, right? Uh, there was some builders. Well, the oldest builder that I could, that I could recall is uh, Porfirio, something Porfirio, and I'll try, I'll try to show some links to to my friend here and so you can kind of see a picture of what I'm talking about and then in San Antonio there was a builder called Guadalupe Acosta you know there's some new Acostas now there's a whole different family so back then in San Antonio it used to be Guadalupe Acosta and he'll make fine instruments he started making fine instruments for famous people and he was kind of kind of the one that kind of modernized a little bit of the, the Bajo Sexto and in the same in the same uh in the same shop, he used to have a worker named Martin Macias. And Martin Macias, pretty much his his goal in life was to make the perfect Bajo Sex store. Like he dedicated his life to that. And I'm pretty sure he may actually have one here. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna show you guys what a Martin Macias looks like. This is a Martin Macias, I believe is from 1966. I wanna say 66. Martin Macias. I just got this one. Um, he became my friend, actually. It was in Bakersfield, and um, as you can see, it was used, man. Has no cracks, though. Normally, these bottles are so old, they get cracks. So this is Martin Macias, and he just kind of just found the right woods, the right combinations, right everything, right look, right pickup look. If, if you guys know Bajo Sexos, this is a traditional look. And that came from Martin Macias and big influence of Vicente, I'm, I'm sorry, Guadalupe Acosta. Because Martin used to work at a shop. And they pretty much just nailed the sound. Of Piece of strings. Just Perfect. So I talked about a little bit of from back in the days i mean and of course there's more builders in the way and one of the builders i want to talk about of course is candelas and another builder is called uh, hernandez that they're in mexico it started with the dad jose hernandez who did a beautiful job now there's two sons and there's more builders out there one of the builders i want people to kind of know about is pasaye pasaye in tijuana jorge pasaye he passed away, he was a good friend of mine. He worked, he was the one that made BC Rich guitars. So if you guys know BC Rich guitars, he was the one that built them in the, the good days. So he brought all that, I mean, it's a big story to that we could talk about that later, but he brought all that, those blueprints, all the ideas, took him to TJ, he kept making BC Rich, and finished, so he brought all those ideas and all those things and he put them into a bajo sexto. And that's the, that's the modern bajo sexto that people see now. But a different type of uh, head, head, just exotic woods that back then people would, with the F, 
on the top. People wouldn't do that to my whole next That was Pasay, and, and I just want to talk about him a little bit because I believe he he was the one that stepped the game for Bajo Sextos in the world. So we're gonna talk about a little bit something I I was talking about. Uh, I was talking with a uh, with the guy that makes Rubens Bajo Sexto. I work him. I work with him. Very good friend of mine. We were talking about. I was asked him one time like, "What do you guys start making bajos? Like, when do you guys? Why? Because he's in uh, it's in Mexico, Paracho Michoacan. And if you know Paracho Michoacan, I mean they're just everywhere everybody builds string instruments and he told me that back then i want to i want to remember the year i can't remember right now but back then they would make instruments but they were not good at all at all so what happened was they brought a lot of uh very good and important luthiers from spain um a lot of people from spain you know what i mean from the, from europe and they went out there and they started teaching a lot of people the craft of building string instruments and that's how they started, that's why Bajos and everybody started being good. That's how, I believe, uh, uh, Guadalupe Acosta, he got school from that program, you want to call it? This, uh, Martin Macias, the, you know, everybody, Candelas, from, I'm talking about years ago. So they gathered all these good luthiers, took them to Mexico to teach all these people how to do the craft the right way. That's a little info that I know, and I wanted just to share that with you guys. Now, where we all come from, we're gonna check out the Valsexto that he, he said he found in, in the window, just getting dried up and old and busted. So we're gonna check it out and see my reaction, what I think about it. My reaction of what I think about it, and see we go from there. I'm gonna try to find uh, attached maybe a builder to it. See what happens. Just check it out. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Yeah, it looks about it looks about right. Oh, I believe the the back came off. The back came off. So oh wow. This is dry, this is old. You know what, you know what's funny? I have a friend of mine that plays the bass that he, I believe he has one of these that he just bought and he keeps telling me, oh, it's old, you gotta see it, you gotta see it. And it looks just like this, you know? There's, you didn't see no marks. There's no marks in here. Normally you make a mark. This is really old, very old bajo. Very old bajo. Okay. Well, Quinta was at a pawn shop at one time. Pretty sure. So I'm checking out. I'm checking out the 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 tuners here. My friend was trying to. He was saying that it was normally once about sex though, but it was not about sex though. What happened here? That back then, they didn't have quinto tuners. So they didn't have quinto tuners, so they just used sexto tuners, and they just used uh, 10 that they needed. So that's why this one has 12, well, we had 12, but you see, it was not needed, because if it would have been a sexto, you'll see the holes, and there's no holes, it's clean work. Clean work, clean work, it's not actually a bad bajo. It's not a bad bajo. This is a very old bajo. I want to say that it looks older than it really is just for the fact that it's been in the sun for a long time. You know what I mean? I mean, it is old. But the first bajo, there was not quintos. So the quintos, we could start, they started making those like in the 70s, I want to say. You know what I mean? I want, correct me if I'm wrong. They started making quintos. So, but this bajo, you could tell it was, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> you probably don't believe me, but it's actually not that bad. This bajo was made, man, the top is already going down. I want to say this bajo was made in the 70s. I want to say it was made in the 70s. I thought it was going to be a little older, 
just for the fact that it's a like original quinto. It's not a sexto, because a sexto would have went all the way over here with the holes, and you could tell that this is this is a quinto. That's one thing. The other thing that it was, it could have been a guitar and then just made it into a bajo. I doubt it, but that's another possibility. The bridge, you mean you could tell it was cars, man. Now that I have this tool, I believe this is an old uh, uh, paracho tool from Mexico, and it looks like that's all they have. I mean, he, he just look fits perfectly on the on the bridge. If you see, look, they just carved it way away. They just gotta kind of give it a nice little finish there. Everything's nice and carved. The has inlays. Inlays is just piece of woods that you just stick in there. Nice uh, Rossetti here, double. Small, small sound hole. It's normally a little bigger. Uh, the bone, it's actually bone. It's actually bone. And I mean, this is, this, this is pretty, pretty cool. This is pretty cool and, and, and uh, and yeah, I mean, back then, they didn't have really, I mean, definitely in this world, they didn't really have like the best tools, the best material. So they just went out there and uh, whatever they had, they just went out there and, and built stuff. As you can see, they did this to the bridge that normally you really don't do. You know what I mean? Kind of to kind of hold it down. Cause it's so much, so much stress pulling, imagine 12 strings pulling this way. So, I mean, it, if you don't have the best material, it's gonna come back right out. So they improvise something there so it will kind of hold it more down. Normally, that's not the right thing to do anymore. No you know what I mean? Because you have a good bridge, you have a good instrument, you should be good with uh, the with, uh, tension. Unless you leave it in the sun, you do the, right, the wrong things to it. But other than that, if you ask me, where was this bajo built? I gotta say, I gotta say Mexico, just by the way the bridge looks. You know what I mean? Cause the people in uh in Mexico, this is kind of like their their signature look for bridge, and they put a little a little uh like a saddle bridge. You know, normally like you can see the other bajos. This one's like kind of like this one. See, has a saddle bridge, and it kind of has that that look. This is more of a Macias finish here. But this is a saddle bridge. This is a saddle bridge. You know what I mean? And I mean, like I said, I believe this bajo was made in Mexico. I want to say it was made in the 70s just for the fact that it's the original Quinto. You know what I mean? I don't think back then traditional people wouldn't bother to make a Quinto. Like, they needed a six string. So that's just, I'm connecting the worlds together. And it has a, a, a classical look, like Spain, Spain, Spaniard look, Spaniard finish, small sound hole, stuff like that. And I mean, it's been, I mean, it's been repaired. As you can see, it has a big repair here in the, in the neck, big old chunk of block of wood right there. That kind of happens. For sure, could use some new frets. I mean, I don't think you could say these frets no more pretty much just chewed down. And it's actually a solid feeling bajo in the neck. Like it's, it's actually very good. Um, this might need a new top, just cause it's all warped up. But I mean, if you could save it, let's try to save it. That's what my opinion to this bajo. So now, we haven't talked about the strings, how the strings work. So this is tuned at F, C, G, D, A. Then you have the six, it's tuned on a, on a E, right? So, or is it B, I'm sorry. But, so it's double, so it's double F, double C, and then in the G, you have a, a thicker gauge G and a small gauge G, right? Tune. And then on the on the fourth, same thing. 
thicker than small, like a 12 string guitar, you know what I mean, type of thing. So it could give you that ring. And um, there's a lot of a lot of people making. Me personally, I use Guadalupe custom strings here in Los Angeles. Good friend of mine, very good strings. Any question about strings about this instrument? There's the people you want to get to. So the question was, should we electrify this, this instrument? Nowadays, everybody puts a pickup here in a sound hole, pickup, and they electrify it because nowadays they use it for big bands, big stages. But back then, back then it was just accordion, maybe a stand-up bass called Tololoche, that we call Tololoche, and this had to be loud. So the higher the action, the louder, the lower the action, the less loud, you know, the string doesn't vibrate as much. So my opinion to be for this bajo to be used in the wild nowadays, <laughs> you wanna say, we need to electrify it so he, he wants to use it when, when no no amps, no speakers, it sounds good, but then he has to use it with a whole band and it's a big stage or maybe not at that big of a stage, but you need to electrify it. We already have the pickup, so plus it doesn't hurt it. That's what I'll do to this bajo. So this is, we talked about this bajo, we talked about a little bit of the history. There's a many things we could talk about. There's, we could stay here all day and talk about this instrument. This instrument has a lot of history, a lot of history. And uh, maybe we'll get together one more day and, and whenever this is finished, we talk about it more. But now I'm gonna show you guys this one and kind of give it a nice little comparison, you know? This is a Martin Macias. And this is, we're trying to find out what it is. I mean, it could be more South, Puebla, you know, just by the cutaway, the way they work on things. We're gonna try to find more info on this and we're gonna have the most info we can. These were made in San Antonio, Texas. And they're still making them, the grandson. And like I said, there's there many good builders out there. I work with Rubens, very good builder, very fine craft, craftsmanship. There's Candelas, there's Hernandez, and there's Jorge Pasay. You want a more modern look, modern touch. And there's many good ones nowadays. So very quick, we're gonna talk about what music is played with as instruments. I mean, you can play anything with this instrument, really. But it started with, uh, with polkas, Back in the days with uh, Santiago Jimenez, sir. Uh, it started with, uh, you know, nice, beautiful songs, just accordion, bajo sexto, maybe a stand-up bass, and it kind of went into a Tejano scene that you're talking about. I mean, you could talk about Tony La Rosa, Steve Jordan, Flaco Jimenez. We could go down there. Um, and then it kind of got more Norteño with Ramon Ayala, I mean, before Ramon Ayala, Paulino Bernal, very, very, very good, uh, the Paulino brothers, then Ramon Ayala, Juan Villarreal, Los Cachorros, we're talking about Los Tigres, they're kind of playing in the background a little bit, and it kind of evolutionized to that. And then a little bit after that, we're talking about corridos. You know, we went to Mexico, Sinaloa, Tocales del Norte, Calero Durango, you, I mean, you go down the list from all those bands. So we started playing corridos, and then it kind of got in, little by little started getting more modern, came here to, 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 to LA, more of a street scene, more of a, a mix of music towards it. So people nowadays are really talented. They play jazz, blues, they play anything really with this instrument, country. So this instrument and the music has really, really evolved. So don't be surprised if you see the instrument being played by anybody really nowadays. I mean, me, myself, I play, I play corridos, polkas, rancheritas. We just recorded an album with oldies called Retro Volume 2, Many Tololoche. Check us out, we play oldies. We started playing a lot of different stuff with this. So it really, back then it was just to kind of kind of give it a, 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 it was a team between it and the accordion, you know, just to play polkas and stuff like that. But nowadays, I mean, you see people use effect pedals now, 
So it really, really, really ev evolutionized and, uh, and I'm just excited to see where it ends up at. So everybody, that anybody that wants to hear this type of music here in LA, or pretty sure anywhere, I mean, just look for Norteño music. It's played in quinceañeras, backyard parties, when people are getting drunk, feeling good. It's, this is what, when people are drinking, this is what comes in, in action. If you guys are around, have any questions, would you guys like to come see me, have a store called El Coyote Music Store. You can check me out on Instagram. I'm there, El Coyote underscore music store. And I have my personal account, which is uh, Manuel Comba, Manuel, C-O-N-B-A, Comba. And I'm here, and this is what I sell, Rubens. And sometimes I grab myself a couple of Macias and good, I try to sell just good bajos, good stuff for everybody and I got strings, I got everything. You guys are in town, let me know. I'll hook you guys up with a lot of bands and different places to go. All right, ain't this pretty. You need to get to the <laughs> Kmart Family Photo Center for this puppy. All right. Yeah, <laughs> handsomeness abound here. It's okay, get control of yourself. But look, we're gonna close this out right now. It's been my pleasure to talk to Manuel here and uh, and learn more about these. Now, ye with little faith, you need to say the rosary or something because you know what I'm gonna do with this. This is gonna be in Calvary's Paradise the next time you see it. And in fact, I'm not just up here talking crap, I'm gonna send it out with him and he's either gonna break it or make something out of it. Now, we had a little bit there about what the scene looks like in LA if you like this kind of music. But if you have ADHD like I do, that's not good enough for you. You want to listen to it right now. So we're going to close this out with a list of people that you can get on a streaming service, iTunes, whatever it is you listen to, YouTube. Manuel, would you give us a list of people that you would listen to sure. right now and buy their music, support music people? Sure. I mean, let's start with people that have hold it down for many years. Let's say, I mean, La Mona Yala, Bravo del Norte. Los Relámpagos del Norte, which is Ramón Ayala con Cornelio Reina. There is, um, there's Cachorro de Juan Villarreal. There is uh, Los Tigres del Norte, they, <clears throat> they made it big. I mean, now modern, modern groups that are really doing a lot of good numbers. It's Grupo Frontera. I mean, I mean, they have a lot of uh, features with big artists. And there's many artists. I mean, Legado Siete really changed the game too. Uh, we have a band, ours is called Manny Tololoche. We have this and the standard bass. We have, um, I mean, you could go down the lead, Conjunto Primavera. And old timers, Los Aleire de Teran, Los Doneños. Who else we got on the list? I mean, we, we could go down the list for, for years. But I mean, those are the most common, most modern. I mean, in Mexico, in Sinaloa, you have Los Intocales del Norte, Los Nuevos Rebeldes. You have, um, if you go in the sax world, Conjunto Primavera, La Maquinaria. You could go down the list, but those are the kind of the top bands. You guys could check it out, and you guys could kind of have an idea what this is all about. Good, so guess what? That's all gonna be on the test. Do not fail. I wanna close this out by telling you, number one, if you don't like this episode, then you don't like yourself. Go look in the mirror, have your grandma pray for you, have the whole church pray for you. But I will tell you, this music has always been there. If you don't believe it, go to Mavericks Music for all occasions, and you'll hear somebody saying, hit it, Flacco. So it's been my pleasure. Manuel, thank you for opening up thank you. your world to us. And once you see this again, somebody will be playing it. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you soon.